that clicked on this video. Thank you so much for being here. I am going to do a quick update on my dendrobiums that are mounted simply because, hey, hey, start of the season and I want to get a clear visual and a reminder also for myself as to how they've come through the winter. What are they doing now? And then maybe see in eight or 10 months how they've progressed from here on in. And starting with Dendrobium Victoria Regina. Her Majesty, she has privilege, so she always comes first or last, depending on protocol. But in this case, first. Doing well has absolutely loved the horrendous winter that we've had, especially throughout the months of mid-February towards the end of March and a little bit into April. Inundated with rain, left her outside to fend for herself and handle the elements and everything that was being thrown at her. So the new growths from last year are extending beautifully. And we can still see some desert sand on there. I'm leaving that. I like to see little pointers and markers. <laughs> Just a reminder of how horrible it was. And now I've got birds chirping around me on a beautiful spring day and no wind to speak of. So last year's growth. Yep, we are pretty much done with those. Right here, the ends have finished growing. And I do not see any buds. Would have loved to have said, oh my goodness, look, we got some buds forming. There are no nubbins at all. The oldest canes have lost their leaves. But these growths I'm very pleased with. This one here I thought I may have lost early, early days in the winter because it looked a little bit brown at the tip, but turns out that was just the bracts doing their job protecting the growing point. And this is what it's been doing since then. This is about six months of growth right here. She's not fast, but she's beautiful. And then throughout the winter, this little growth right here started. This was a keiki that I took off one of the plants when I first mounted her. So that one's matured, finished growing, but it's growing its own new growth now, which, wow, surprisingly, I'm talking 24 hour rain consistently for days and days and days. Even if it stopped raining, it was at night, it was very, very cold. And you know, <laughs> the growth is pointing upwards, it's pouring with rain. And I thought, I'm gonna lose this growth, but I wanted to push this orchid as far as I could to see what a kind of abuse she could take. And hey, it is now starting to leaf out. Love it. Thank you, Victoria Regina, for dealing with that weather better than I did. <laughs> Dendrobium unicum is showing signs of life. I mean, it doesn't look dead, but you know how dendrobiums are in the winter. They sort of like just, you know, frazzle out and you're like going, oh, sticks on a mount, okay. But hey, when this starts to happen right here, uh-huh, look at that. We are in for a treat. We are in for some beautiful, beautiful orange Dendrobium unicum blooms. All the way down there, I have another one. I have to be really careful, not get ahead of myself, not to snap these guys off. I only have this one cane. If I want this orchid to bloom, I only have this one. So I gotta be very, very careful. But, oh, so excited. What confuses me now is that usually my Victoria Regina and my Unicum, they actually bloom at the same time, which is so pretty because I get that gorgeous deep violet of the Victoria Regina and the bright, bright orange of the Unicum next to each other. It's almost like the Pantone color palette meets on my patio. But hey, at least we have the orange to look forward to. Still no new growth though, but that's okay. Blooms are on the way. <laughs> This is Dendrobium exile. Woohoo! Made it through the winter. I'm losing the little growth down here. You can see that's gone all yellow, which is a shame, but it is only the little one, which if that is all I'm going to lose, I'm going to settle. I'll settle. Just don't. I don't want to lose any more because these growths, they grow continuously season after season until eventually they stop. So this is a new growth. It hasn't stopped growing. But you see, this was also a new growth and it stopped growing. At least this one back here is looking nice and fresh. I was just putting some fresh RO water on it, seeing as this mound had already dried off from this morning. So another little spritz of freshness will do it just fine until the evening. But we can also see the growing point up here. That growth is extending beautifully, as is this one. I am kind of expecting some blooms here. You can see that, oh, at least I hope you can. Some of the nodes, gotta be careful. Some of the nodes are branching and those normally are flower spikes, but some of them are also yellowing. 
considering our horrendous weather, I'm not surprised. It's probably saying, yep, that was great. I'm gonna bloom now. And then bam, it got slammed with some cold temperatures and it was like, eh, maybe not. <laughs> but all in all, the orchid is looking great. I even have some branching on this lower growth right here. And this is the beauty of this orchid. If you mess up and something happens to the growing point, it's like, no, oh, that's fine, not bothered. I'm just gonna grow somewhere else. And here it is. Great orchid, love it. Yes, and this is what I mean when I talk about sticks on a mount. <laughs> These are my first ever Dendrobium aphyllum keikis. First ever, not just from the mother plant that I bought, but first ever that also went into a prototype of sorts for an inorganic mount. I have the evolution of the inorganic mounts as a playlist. I will link that playlist in case you're here for the first time and are going, what is that? Well, the playlist is down there so you can understand my thought process over the past years. But these are the small ones. I also have a monster amount of a film keikis that I cultivated in 2021. That's going to be a completely separate video because making that mount was a video in its own right and it deserves its very very own update. So I'm only going to feature my first ever dendrobium keikis from the mother plant and I spy with my little eye just now Woohoo! We've got a growth starting from the first one. Coolio! No, wait! They're all at it. Look at that. Right there. Can you see? Oh, I hope so. Don't be shy. Anyway, right there is another one. And right there. There we go. Is another one. And four out of four? Yes, four out of four. Okay. Last year, this little mount, let's see where it was hanging, right there. Last year, this little mount gave me one bloom. I'm not seeing any nubbins on these keikis. They're pretty pathetic for coming into their third year, but we're going to keep going, going to keep working at it and see what happens in future. Hey, new growths on keikis already, even if they're not blooming, I'll take it. Happy days. Even a keiki has a keiki, but that is not going to survive if I take it off. But yeah, if you're interested in how I made a monster mount out of keikis of 2021, that video will also be linked so that you can catch up when the update on that mount comes out. You will already be in the know. The orchid that I bought as a replacement for my Dendrobium unicum, because that unicum that you saw before arrived with a snapped cane. And I was very, very concerned with the little that I had left of it. And I thought, no, I'm going to get a replacement straight away because this is not looking good. Well, hey, you just saw it. It's going to bloom. Anyway, so this is the orchid that I bought as my replacement of unicum. And I'm like going, hey now, because <laughs> not only did the whole canes look totally different. And I thought, hmm, I know I have a unicum. I wonder who you are. Or are you a different variety of unicum? Anyway, when she bloomed for me the first time, boom, she was white. Awesome. I love white. And she was very fragrant as well. So I feel terrible that off the top of my head, I cannot pinpoint who gave me the name of this orchid. I have now made it a common practice to put the names of everybody that gave me an ID to my orchids on the back of my tags. And eh, yeah, that common practice is very, very recent. So if you watch this video and you say, I knew what that is and I gave you the ID, please leave me a comment so I can make sure that I put your name on my tag and never ever forget and come into this awkward situation of not being able to say thank you. But here we are. This is, after all that, this is Dendrobium bensoniae. Gorgeous orchid. I'm happy I got it even though it was a mistake. Personally, I would have never thought of getting a bensonia for my collection, but whew, here we are. And it's getting two new growths. Check this out. Oh, these are already like maybe two weeks when I first saw the little eyes swelling at the base. So we're two weeks in. Cool, huh? I was hoping. <laughs> um, anybody else greedy when it comes to growing orchids and you see new growth coming? I was hoping to get a third lead because, I mean, there's plenty going on at the base of this orchid. Oh, I just walked around the tripod. Um, <laughs> let me show you something. Let's see if I can do this from this angle. Ta-da! You see that? Growth number three. Bensoni, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Now let's hang her up again where she was. Nope, that was too high. Yeah, I appreciate you, Bensoni. Thank you. Just watch. Where am I now? Am I? In, was she in the middle? Yep, there we go. 
three growths, happy days, because she is going to bloom on the canes right here. You can see my 2021 attempt at growing this orchid outright was successful. The second side, not as much. It was a smaller section. It is possible I've got two orchids on here, you know, as you do. And then here, this was the cane that did bloom for me where then I got the ID. So three growths found one together with you just by walking around and checking the other side because two growths, come on, you can do better than that. This is Dendrobium polyanthum, an orchid that I bought for the sake of the polyanthum. Beautiful, beautiful spray of white blooms that have a crystalline shimmer to them and a lot of those white blooms. And even though personally I do not like to eat licorice, I like the fragrance of licorice. And this orchid has a licorice fragrance to boot. Sugary licorice, like you would have when you open a bag of Haribo which is the German brand that I always used to have for my children and the one that I'm familiar with. Not the salty vinegar kind of taste of the licorice for the real hardcore licorice fans. Not that fragrance. Sugary licorice. It is absolutely delicious to smell, not to eat in my case. <laughs> anyway, all the growths from last year have finally, to a degree, for the most part, lost their leaves. This has taken forever, but this dendrobium defoliates very, very slowly throughout the winter. And only in spring does she then end up going, well, hey, now, whoops, you know, I got to lose my leaves here. So now we are at this stage, but throughout the winter, it took forever for her to get to this point. Anyway, you can see all the new growths from last season. They're still white. I haven't been pedantic about pulling the leaves off which I sometimes do to get nice clean canes. But this winter I thought, no, leave it. The forecast was horrendous. And anyway, this outer coating gives it a bit of a protection as well. Besides that, I can differentiate which growths were from 2021. Now we wait, <laughs> literally, because from here on in, we should see some swellings eventually on the canes for the blooming to start before we actually see any new growths. So. This orchid, as you can see, is also on one of my inorganic mounts and can deal with a little bit more water this early in the day. This is just plain RO water now because, you know, no new growths, no nubbins. Just making sure that I don't come to the point of no roots. <laughs> but also what I found very interesting, and I might need to do a complete inorganic mount update at some point, but I'm going to point it out right here. The part where the orchid was attached to bark when I took her off, I didn't clean out all the roots that were on the bark because she was really attached and I was going to do a lot of damage and I didn't want to risk that. Seeing as she's going on something completely different, being inorganic, but interestingly enough, maybe you saw on my Victoria Regina just how much moss had naturally populated itself on that mount. No sign of the sphagnum moss that I had on that mount prior. But you see what's going on here? This moss should travel, you'd think, into the inorganic material back here, which is extractor fan hob material kind of thing. It's very, very loose, very, very airy, brilliant for fine roots. So um, this orchid has been on this mount for two and a half, maybe almost three years. That moss is not progressing. Which is interesting because now it also shows me that I was taking spores out of the established moss from this mount and also from the Victoria Regina and I was putting the spores everywhere not just on this mount but my other inorganic mounts but no dice that moss does not like my inorganic mounts unless <laughs> let me just turn this around check this out do you think it is starting to spread over here on this side very, very reluctantly. Oh, I hope the shadows will show that. If not, I'll take a picture. Very, very reluctantly. Hmm. Let's see if three years is what it takes for moss to start populating. If that is the case, then I shall be spreading more spores on the other mounts. But polyanthum, totally, totally empty and devoid of leaves. We wait for blooms now. This is my sorry looking Dendrobium anosmum. This will be its third watering of the day. Just plain RO water again, no fertilizer. But eventually, fertilizer will be a go because there is an eye. Let's see if I can do this. Swelling right at the base. 
Uh, that's been there now two days that I've noticed it's swelling. Now, the plans for this orchid for the rest of the season is once I see new roots grow, it is coming off that mount. The reason being, this is the growth that it came with. Oh, it's down here. Pretty long, but it's starting to desiccate. Normal, not worried about that. And then I had this growth as a new growth when it arrived in my collection. And then I grew this growth in 2020 and this growth in 2021. Yeah, so what's wrong with this picture? Well, you know, take all the acclimating years aside. We get that, that can happen. And that is why this growth is the size it is. I mean, it did bloom for me, but wow, we know what an osmum can do and are capable of. So when this growth only grew to this size, I thought, okay, you should be done with your acclimating process. And then I thought, well, maybe it wasn't getting enough water on my inorganic mount, my very dry climate, etc., etc. Anyway, so what's going to happen this year is once it shows me roots, this orchid is going in a pot and I will be able to reuse my inorganic mount for something else. Simply because I can grow this orchid outdoors in my climate all year round, it will not be any problem with shelf space indoors, which I have to be very, very mindful of. It's always easy in the summer when everybody is spread around, you think you have so much space, whoa! There's a calculation process with everything I do when I repot. This orchid going into a pot is not going to affect any space issues outside whatsoever, seeing as I have plenty of space outside. But I'm looking forward to potting this one up because then I want to see if there is a difference, a marginal difference with the growth that I have now starting. And here we are in my fun space. This is where they live. To the left of you is south facing. Facing straight forward is the west side and to the right of you would be north facing and this is where these mounts live. In the summer they are completely exposed to bright shade. No sun is going to hit this spot for the next six to seven months. Yippee! Because the sun is rising in the sky yet even more. Now let me see, can I get this higher? But yeah, so in the winter they will get a lot, a lot of light because the angle of the sun is much, much lower, clearly. And then they get direct sunlight as and when. So basically, with the exception of the exile, which is right here, everybody stays outside. And the seasons do everything with light requirements for me. But yeah, so that's my update on the dendrobium mounts at the beginning of the growth season for us here in the Northern Hemisphere of 2022. Roll on some blooms. That would be awesome. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Really appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition though, you please stay safe and take care. Bye.